the next one up, I'll let you do the talking instead of me saying anything in between. Matthew Breimer from General As Assembly. Uh, he's got a new, new take on education, which is really interesting. Cool. Thanks. Um, so I'm actually going to talk about failure. Because uh, I've heard um, failure, I th feel like it's a, a, a kind of meaningful topic of conversa conversation. And I think it's something that people talk a lot, especially the difference maybe between American startup culture and European startup culture. So I think it's something to talk about. Um, and I'll do this kind of by sharing a little bit of my uh, entrepreneurial story. So several years ago, um, my first kind of big entrepreneurial adventure uh, was an antique furniture business. Both my parents are small business owners and entrepreneurs in their own right, so I always kind of grew up with this idea of admiring, you know, uh, a business owner or someone who started their own thing. Um, so freshman year of college, uh, I was at Yale, and somehow a couple of roommates and I discovered that Yale was um, getting rid of, they were renovating a couple of buildings on campus. They were getting rid of various old antique furniture, um, card catalogs, tables, chairs, these um, like big wood pieces of furniture from the early uh, 1920s, 1930s. And they were selling these pieces off at a warehouse 15 minutes drive away from campus. So um, my two roommates and I, we went, we took, got a U-Haul, which is a, a rental truck. Um, those of you not from the States. Uh, we went to this warehouse and we um, found a, a large, you know, 400 pound, um, six foot, sorry, none of this is in metric, I apologize. Six foot tall, you know, it's about yay high, um, card catalog that was, uh, that they were selling for $50. We bought it, um, put it back in the truck, brought it back to our dorm room, figured we could sell it for a few hundred dollars. Put it on eBay, said, you know, Yale University, card catalog, removed from Sterling Memorial Library, ended up selling for $1,000, um, which I guess in Kroner is like, bought it for what, about 250, sold it for about 5,000. Um, and so we thought, wow, there's an opportunity here. We went back, uh, hired a moving company, um, bought our, got our own warehouse 15 minutes the other direction from campus, and ended up buying about 25 of these card catalogs. And over the course of the following um, year, uh, we ended up procuring uh, tables, chairs, for, um, big kind of other antique pieces, more card catalogs. We created a website uh, with an e-commerce um, aspect to it, created a brand called Aloysius Properties. Uh, created certificates of authenticity that said, you know, this antique furniture X uh, has been removed from Yale University, you know, and the two signatories were myself and my roommate. Um, and, and, and it was a, you know, great uh, kind of entree into, you know, having your own business, buying something for less and selling it for more. Uh, eventually, by, by the following year, the buildings that the college was renovating were um, buildings that hadn't been built in, uh, or that were, were built in the 70s. And so what was being auctioned, or what they were getting rid of, um, were these like slightly rusted kind of 1970s um, filing cabinets, which turns out nobody wanted. So we moved on. Um, we had a very nice bar that year in our dorm, as you can imagine. Um, moved on and decided to start a real startup. Um, and by that I mean uh, a company that raises venture capital and makes no money. Um, so we, uh, we, myself and a couple of other um, collaborators got together, and uh, if you're familiar with the board game Risk, we basically, um, this is now 2007, we saw that, you know, as Facebook and other social networks were starting to take off, we were seeing um, social motivations like vanity, voyeurism, and keeping in touch with old, fr with old friends be real kind of positive social motivations that were driving people to interact online through these social networks. But one aspect of, um, of our life that we didn't see being taken online was this idea of rivalries, sports rivalries, college rivalries, this idea that you can associate yourself under a banner um, and be a part of a team or a larger affiliation with other people you might not know, but that you feel a connection with because you both went to the same school, you both are a fan of the same sports team, you're both from the same city, what have you. Um, and so we created this, this massively multiplayer social game, kind of like Risk. But rather than a map of the world, it was a map of your city, your college campus, with real world territories and buildings and places that you might walk on every day that were these ownable, conquerable territories that you could um, defend and attack and move around to. Um, we, uh, we raised, ended up raising about two million in venture capital over the course of about a year. Um, we built out a team. Um, this was mostly while we were still in school. So my senior year, I was taking the train in from New Haven, which is about an hour and a half away outside of New York, taking the train in to New York where our office was, working a full day, pretending to be a real, you know, full-time professional entrepreneur. And that evening, going back to school, um, going back to being a, a student. Um, it was an interesting ride. It lasted about two, two and a half years. 
uh, unfortunately, we, well, well, we had, I think, a pretty interesting product. We ended up, for a while, being the largest college gaming network. Um, we never really figured out how to generate any revenue. And apparently, making money is something important to a business. Uh, or so they say, you know, depending on who you talk to. Um, so by summer of 2009, um, the recession was in full force. We were trying to raise another round of capital. It wasn't happening. Um, eventually, you know, by that summer, we ran out of cash, gave the last money back to our investors, had to close up shop, wind things down. Um, we had to let everyone in our company go, which was a very, very difficult time, um, as you can imagine. Any of you have run a company or, or found a company and had to close it down and, and let people go, um, not because they weren't good employees or because they didn't do their job, but because, you know, you fucked up and the company is over and, you know, you have great people working for you, some of whom had families, um, and you have to, you know, part ways uh, and tell them, you know, sorry, it didn't work out. Uh, not, a, not a fun experience. Um, for the most, most of my college career, uh, I was expecting to graduate and um, I wanted to go and work full-time as co-founder of my own startup. And, you know, having started this social gaming company while in school um, and having raised money, I figured, great, this is the path. This is, you know, I have, I'm building what I want to um, be a part of and what I want to do with myself after I graduate. Of course, that only works if you actually, if the company that you start actually has money and exists, which by the time I graduated, we were shutting down and we didn't have any more money. So I ended up moving to New York, um, didn't have a job, didn't have a company anymore. I just let a bunch of people go. Um, had to go to back to you know all of my friends and family and tell them, you know what, this thing that I've been working on and building and getting so excited about it the last several years is now totally dead and, and failed. Um, but it was that process, really, that, that eventually led to the creation of General Assembly. Um, I moved to New York. Uh, myself and my co-founder spent a lot of time going, going through you know, the last two years. And, and you know, when you have a, a failed startup, um, well, let me, let me explain it a little bit differently. When you talk to a successful entrepreneur, it's very hard to separate what's skill and what's luck. Because with any successful enterprise, you have a lot of both, right? But when you look at a failed company or talk to a failed entrepreneur, um, there's probably not a whole lot of luck involved. And uh, if you really kind of dig, you can, you can see your, the shortcomings of your skill. And, you know, it was, um, cool. Uh, it was, it was quite, a, um, quite a, you know, a meaningful experience for us to go back and, and look at all the decisions we made, look at the shortcomings we had, look at where our skills failed us, you know, where we took a wrong turn. And I think, you know, that there's so much, there's so much to be learned um, by understanding your own shortcomings, your own abilities. You know, you can really figure out what you're good at and what you're not good at, um, and where to, where you can learn and where you can develop, but then also, you know, what you should be spending your time on. Uh, I think it's, you know, it's, it's, it was not only important, but necessary for starting General Assembly. So to finish this off, uh, moved to New York. I was doing a little bit of web design, freelance, you know, consulting, that kind of thing on the side to pay the bills. I knew I didn't want to take a real job. I knew I wanted to start a new venture, do a new startup, learn from the mistakes that we had made in, you know, uh, the social gaming company and do something hopefully bigger and better and more meaningful. And I was talking to all these other entrepreneurs and, and you know, other people in the, the startup community in New York. And we realized that there were a lot of people who were in similar positions, people who had maybe had startups before or were trying, oftentimes, you know, maybe trying something out for the first time. And there were all these learnings and best practices and lessons that many of us had um, that we just needed to share with each other. And that, you know, some people had been through, you know, the trials and tribulations of having done something and failed, and other people were just starting out. And if we could get together and share those learnings and share that knowledge and be a part of a larger community, that that was something that could hopefully, you know, be a tie that would raise all boats. Uh, so we ended up, you know, over the course of the next several months, pulling together a grassroots community, launching General Assembly, managed to get a grant from the city, build out our first campus. And now, you know, two and a half years later, uh, we're in eight cities around the world, um, providing education for tens of thousands of people in technology, design, and business. But we would not have been able to be as successful as we've, as we've been, um, and as, as, as fortunate as it's been, um, nor would General Assembly even exist at all had we not gone through the up and eventually down of my previous, of our previous uh, entrepreneurial venture. So while I'm not encouraging all of you to fail um, at what you're doing, I encourage all of you to hopefully have a failure at some point and learn from it because it'll make you better. It will allow you to you know, realize important things about yourself and hopefully go on to do um, you know, bigger and better things in the future. So thanks so much and best of luck. <laughs> thanks. 
Thanks a lot. That, I think that's uh, a very important topic to bring up, especially here in the Nordics. We're a little bit afraid to fail. Uh, but if you look at the founders here, I know that many of you have failed several times and come back to create awesome things. So that's, uh, that's it's a very valuable talk. Thanks.